many people find referencing challenging, but in this video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rohan. I'm a third year medical student studying at Cambridge University. Today we will be looking at referencing in EPQ, but in reality, it will be relevant to any academic writing you do in the future. So hopefully this is one of those high yield videos. Referencing sometimes scares or confuses people, but it's honestly quite straightforward. And hopefully today by showing you some examples, I can show you just how easy it is, particularly for the EPQ. So you might be asking, why do we even have to reference in the first place? I think there are three main reasons why referencing is important. Firstly, it's important to give credit to other people's work, and that's so you avoid plagiarism. I mean, this is just common sense. Imagine how you'd feel if you spent months or even years developing a theory and like testing it, only for someone to take your ideas in their paper without giving credit to you. So in this way, we should be sure not only to reference direct quotes, but also when we're paraphrasing ideas in our work. Secondly, referencing gives our work credibility. This is because it shows that the facts we are using to support our argument aren't just made up. And thirdly, being able to reference accurately in the correct format leaves a good impression. And I think this is particularly important when you start writing for academic journals. You may have heard there are different referencing styles and formats, such as like Harvard, MLA, Chicago, and there are many more. Don't worry about too much of the different styles. In the EPQ, it doesn't really matter what referencing style you choose, so long as you're consistent throughout your EPQ using that format, and that you use the format accurately. However, there are some general rules of thumb to bear in mind when you are picking a referencing format. For example, styles like MLA and Chicago, I think, tend to be used for humanities-based subjects or papers. They also tend to use footnotes, whereas styles such as Harvard and Vancouver, which we'll be talking about in this video, are typically used in science or medically related papers, and they tend to use endnotes instead of footnotes. If you're not sure which one to pick, be sure to ask your supervisor just to ask which one they think is the most appropriate. However, if your supervisor doesn't know, it might be good just to check out what referencing style other sources have used in your topic area. So just literally just go and look at their reference list and try to work out which format they've used. So when it comes to referencing, by far your most useful resource is this website called Cite This For Me. I think there's also a bibliography builder type thing on Microsoft Word, but honestly this is a bit of a faff and Cite This For Me is so much more straightforward. Let me quickly demonstrate how it works and for that we'll have to enter a screencast. Okay, so I thought the best way to show you just how easy it is to reference using Cite This For Me is just to give you a demonstration. So here I've selected an article which I used for a recent project. Yeah, I want to cite this in the Vancouver format. And Vancouver, you'll see, as we said, in medically related papers, and in particular, if you look on like online databases like PubMed, this tends to be the referencing format uh, which is used. So it's a good one to know. Okay, so I want to cite this paper using Cite This For Me. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can either copy and paste the title into Cite This For Me, then like search for the specific paper, which comes up in the search terms. Arguably, a much more efficient way of using Cite This For Me is to use the DOI. So DOI, as you can see here, um, that stands for Digital Object Identifier. And it's basically like a barcode for journal articles. So basically, when you copy and paste this number, as we're going to do right now, and when you put it into Cite This For Me, it immediately recognizes what paper you're talking about. So let's go over to Cite This For Me, and because I've used uh, this website before, it looks a little bit different to what it may look like for you. For you, I think they'll first ask you to choose a referencing type. So here we've chosen Vancouver, but you know, if you search for anything, you can have Harvard or Chicago, any of the main ones. But here, we, yeah, we're happy with Vancouver. And now we're gonna add new reference. Oh, and just one thing, just ignore all these pop-up ads. Like, don't worry, it's not a dodgy website. There's just lots of ads. Okay, here you can see you have a choice between quite a lot of source types, particularly if you press more. So that's actually good because it can show you what different types of sources count. And particularly in the last video, we're talking about like using a wide range of resources. So this is something for you to explore. Anyway, let's go to journal and let's and you can say either search for the article title or enter a DOI. Well, we're going to paste the DOI in. And when we search, you can see it's it identified what paper we were talking about. And it's already written out all the authors and like journal title, the article title, year published. 
but it's done all the hard work for us, so we don't have to bother typing it up. Which is why I cite this for me is just so convenient to use. Anyway, now let's now press add reference. And you can see it starts building a bibliography for us. Now, we don't really want to use it because as you can see, if you don't subscribe to their premium version or whatever, it expires in a few days. So we're not going to use that, instead we're going to build our own one at the end of our project, as I'll show you. Okay, so now it gives us two options to either copy bibliography citation or copy in-text citation. We want to copy the bibliography citation because in-text citation for Vancouver is just a number, so we don't really need that. Yeah, because Vancouver is an example of an author number system. This contrasts to like Harvard, which is author name, and we'll just touch on that later. Anyway, so copy bibliography citation, you can see it's come to our clipboard, and no, we don't want to join their premium version. Okay, I'm going to go over to the Word document now, and I basically highlighted the fact which I used from that reference. So it was actually a study, and this was one of their results. So I need to cite this paper if I want to talk about that result. And you can see this is the seventh reference in my project thing. So let me go down to the reference list and show you um, how this is referenced. So you can see I've already done the reference there, but I just want to quickly show you how I did it, um, just so it makes more sense. And here I've done it again, but well, let's do it another time. Okay, so we're going to copy and paste that, and here it's not the first one. I mean, it's the first one on the site this for me, but it's actually the seventh one we're using. So we'd put a number seven. For the EPQ, this would probably be more than enough. Like, this is close enough to the accurate format of the Vancouver. But if you really want to impress them, there are a couple of like subtle changes you want to make to the bibliography format, and I'll show you that now. So in Vancouver, you typically only want to have three authors. And then after the third author, you put something called et al. So let me do that. Et al. Full stop. And you italicize that. Oopsies. Uh, et al. Italicize. So et al. I think means and others. So it basically just shows that there's more authors. I mean, here there's six authors, and that'll probably take up quite a lot of space in the journal. So yeah, we put et al. Then there's the uh, there's the journal title, no, sorry, not the journal title, but the article title, which Cite This For Me has very kindly generated for us. This is followed by a full stop. And then we want the journal title. Now, the journal title for Vancouver is typically in italics, so let's put that in italics. And they typically want the abbreviated version of the journal. So if we go back to the actual article, you can see that PubMed has actually provided the abbreviation for us. So it's JM Akkad Derm, Dermatol. So let me just copy that. Copy. And I think I need to do this paste match formatting or something. Okay, yeah. So just get rid of these random bullet points. So this is what the journal title should be. It should be in its abbreviated form. So JM Akkad Dermatol. Lovely. And then we don't want to full stop copy separating that and the year, so it was published in 2013. And then there's a semicolon, which Cite This For Me is put in for us. And then, just to tidy up a bit, we don't need that bracketed number. I forgot what that bracketed number is, but it'll tell you on Cite This For Me. But you don't need that. I think the 68, this is a volume number. Obviously it'll be different depending on what specific paper you're citing. But this needs to be bolded for Vancouver. And then you have your page numbers. And typically you can abbreviate the second, so yes, 729 to 737. You can even, for example, if it was like 728 and 729, that'd be like this. So they like it in a very abbreviated form. And yeah, that's pretty much Vancouver referencing. And then if you go back to in text, so where was it in text? Yeah, in text, you have to just superscript this number. So yeah, superscript that after the punctuation mark. Sometimes you might see, like on NCBI and maybe other journals, that they have the in-text citation in square brackets. So they put the number inside square brackets, and that's fine as long as you're consistent with either format. But I think superscript looks a bit neater, so that's what I've gone for here. An alternative way to like talk about a study in your text is that you can mention the author's name itself. So I think I've done that later on in the article. So here, Drew et al. So basically I wanted to talk about another study showing another result. And you can see I've taken the first 
author's name and just put et al when talking about the study. I haven't bothered with the year because this is not an author name referencing system. So that's that. I will briefly talk about Harvard referencing just because I know it's quite a popular choice for people doing the EPQ. For the bibliography citation, don't worry about doing additional formatting after you copy and paste the one from Cite This For Me. Like, at EPQ level, it's more than fine just to copy and paste straight from the website, and that's what I did. But for the in-text citation, you basically want to have like the first author, and then et al, and then a the year. So for this specific one, number seven, if I was to Harvard reference this in-text, I put a bracket, and then who is my first author again? Watson. So put Watson, and then et al, remember in italics, and then the year. So the year was 2013, okay, 2013. And that's how you'd Harvard reference this in text. Sometimes for different numbers of authors, there are different referencing techniques. So I think I found a page which was helpful for this, yeah. So this table basically tells you if there's two or three authors, it's slightly different, but don't worry too much about that. So there you go, you know how to reference in Vancouver style, and we've even talked a bit about the Harvard referencing style. And I hopefully I've shown you that site this for me is really easy to use. Anyway, let's go back and talk a bit more about referencing. We're now just going to bash through some things to bear in mind when referencing. Firstly, it's important when you're using a particular source multiple times in your project that you have an in-text reference for each time that you've taken a fact or idea from that source. But bear in mind that you only actually have to include it once in your final reference list. When you're using footnotes, technically you'd have to include a footnote each time you use it, but I think after the first time you use it, every subsequent time you can use the reference in an abbreviated form. Now I'm not really too sure how this works because I don't really use footnotes, but I'll link down below to a helpful website which explains this. And while we're on footnotes and just references in general, Apparently you can add some extra information by the bibliography citation or the footnote citation where you talk about the reliability of that source. This is not something I knew when I was doing the project, it's only something I came across when doing research. This is actually good for those higher level AO2 marks when you have to criticise the source. Next, it's important to remember to cite any images that you used which you haven't created or designed yourself. Cite this for me, as we showed earlier, is really easy to do this. Thirdly, remember to always cite from the primary source where possible. So for example, sometimes if you're reading like secondary research, like a literature review for example, if the source said like Stevens et al 1998 found that, and then you wanted to use the fact which came from that sentence, you'd have to reference Stevens et al 1998 and not the authors of the literature review. And finally, just to address some FAQs about referencing in the EPQ, people often ask how many references do you need in the EPQ? Obviously it depends on your chosen subject and topic, and it will vary a lot between different projects. However, for sciencey projects, which have a lot of facts and maybe empirical data, I think you should be aiming for at least 20 sources. This is because you'll probably have to draw on several sources if you want to find enough information to fill 5,000 words. However, be sure not to just add sources for the sake of it. Like having a big bibliography does not get you extra marks. The variety and quality of your sources are more important. And obviously what's even more important is your actual writing and how good that is. And remember, for the EPQ, references do not contribute to your word limit. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you found it useful, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. If you haven't already done so, you might want to check out my other videos in the EPQ series. I'm sure you'll find them helpful. Anyway, take care and bye for now.